Hi, in this video I'm going to introduce you to the circuit review which comes after the circuit interview. The circuit interview itself is a fantastic thing because it's comprehensive and it's thorough and it's deep and it's broad and it means that we've laid out the, the state that things are, we've laid out the whole landscape, we can see it. But that's not enough. It's in the, you know, in the old days, in the wild west days of web design, what would happen is the client would come along and say, this is our business, these are our customers, this is what we want to sell, and maybe this is what we want to have happen on our website. And the web designer would take the brief, maybe ask a few questions, and then just go ahead and do it. They just roll out what they've been told. Right? Welcome to our website, this is what we do, contact us. Um, to... to take web design to a really strategic level where we are really delivering strategic change, strategic positioning it takes more than that. It takes more than just saying okay these are the answers to the questions and let's roll with it, right? Because the circuit reveals all the gaps. The circuit will reveal the misalignments. So the circuit review is really really critical because in the circuit review, what we do is we say, okay, this is what's looking good. These are our green lights. Here are things that aren't on message or aren't in alignment with the rest of it. Or, you know, here's what's missing in our business proposition, in our, um, I mean, the, the circuit can represent the whole client relationship or a whole business model. Okay. So it can tell us what's missing. But there are also things that we should do above and beyond that if we're going to be true strategic consultants, which are things like, how can we do it better, right? Let's not just accept the, the straight answers to the questions that the client may have given us, but let's imagine what could be done different, what could be done better. So in this video, I'm just going to give you some simple but very, very powerful questions that we'll use to analyze the information that we get from the circuit interview before we, we start to you know, put anything down in terms of code or pages or, or anything at all. The really, really important steps. So this is the circuit review document which we've got online as a Google Doc which you, sh you should all be able to access. If you can't access it, contact me. Um, reason this is an online document and not a WordPress page is because uh, we all need to be able to access it from anywhere, from multiple devices, and it's also going to be a growing document. Uh, just like the circuit questionnaire itself, we're going to be improving this over time. So there's a timestamp on there to say when it was last updated, and this really is this just simple set of questions just to make sure that we've covered all of the angles and not left anything out which we should have considered. So the purpose of the review, like we said, is to establish whether there's like a, a business model, a marketing proposition, something that we should be taking to market. Um, it's far more effective and cost effective to make changes at the strategic thinking stage than it is to change things once you've invested in implementing a marketing campaign online. So what we're doing here is we are making sure that we've considered all the angles not just so that we've understood the lay of the land, the landscape which is what the circuit questionnaire gives us. It gives us all the facts. The circuit review step is more about thinking well what is missing, what could be improved and we, we're really trying to add significant value at this stage. So this this is a step that can be done quickly if everything looks pretty good um, but we should definitely make sure that we don't skimp on this because it, it's terribly important. Okay, So so you can do you can do it quickly or you can spend days on it. Um, the deliverables from this step will be a summary of the the findings of the circuit. So we'll if you're working with a client, you may give them a, a five-minute call or an email or a short report that says, here's my assessment of 
the brand, your products and services, your propositions, and here are any actions that I believe we should be taking now before we start to plan our campaign and, and certainly roll anything out to market. So the first overall questions that we've got are really about those five elements because they need to be present, which means that we need to know, you know, is there a problem? Do we know what the problem is that we're addressing? You'd be amazed how many people spend significant amounts of money marketing when they haven't really communicated the problem, haven't really understood it and verbalized it to themselves. Um, is there a problem? Is there a market? Right? Say the, um, and the, you know, the market has to be uh, identifiable, has to be coherent, and we have to know how we can reach it, for example which was not the case with, say, Tai Chi for Beginners, if you're familiar with that, with that case study. So, are all the elements present? Are they clear and distinctive? As in, can we sum up what we're doing in a nice, neat way? Think about Occam's razor. You know, the uh, simplest solution is usually the best. Can you communicate it in just a few words? Right? And is it distinctive? Particularly when, with regard to propositions, that's, that's the most important. We want our propositions to be unique in the market, if possible. And are these elements strong? Yeah, is it a strong problem? Is it a strong market? Is it a strong proposition? Is it a strong product or service? Because the thing that we, that we need to appreciate at, at this point is that any of the circuit elements may be modified including the brand you know, even a a business or a an individual may choose to focus on or choose to present different aspects of themselves you know there are many different roles that we can play in life and we need to be choosing the roles that are most in line with who we are with what we love to do with what we're good at and and the the change that we wish to make in the world. And exactly the same goes for a business and a business's brand as well. And then finally, all, do all those elements align with each other? And particularly, do they align with the brand? That's generally the most important. That's generally the most important. And if any of those elements are not in line, then what could we do? What what could we do to bring that element back into alignment? Okay. So we'll just whiz through these fairly quickly. Starting with with the brand, we need to ask basically: Is it good? Does it get a green light, or is it an amber light with warnings, or is it a red light, which means, you know, we need to stop and make changes before we continue? Does the brand know what it stands for, its mission and its purpose? The story is incredibly important. Because when your story connects with the worldview of your target market, you're not just giving them a solution to their problem. You're doing something at a higher level, which is giving them something that they can trust and that they can believe in. People are devoted to the Apple brand irrespective of its products. There are people that will buy Apple and keep buying Apple because they identify with that brand. And this isn't just a, a, a fickle thing. You know, the, um, the human desire to belong is extremely deep. It's right in our DNA. Is the mission story credible? Is your origin story real and credible? And does the client feel it? Are they fully behind the mission? Are we 100% clear who or what the client is and I don't just mean, you know, they are a business, they are a sole trader, they are a consultant. It's like, what are you to the world? You know, what do you mean to the world? Are we clear what they do? Are we clear how they do it uniquely? What their global proposition or their global promise is, you know, which is very much an extension of, of your stand, and why they do it all. So, you know, in all of that, we find... The, the origin story, the mission, and the values all, all mixed up. The next question is critical, 2.3. Have we really maxed what they can be to the world? Or if you're doing it for yourself, have you really maxed what you can be to the world? 
maybe take the areas that are your particular strengths the areas where you your passion really lies I think a lot of us can find ourselves doing many different things in life and businesses are you know, no different where actually some of those things are really where our heart lies where our love is where our passion is maybe some of those things we will do better than others but yet we feel like we have to present a spread we have to do multiple things and what can happen when you do that is that you end up not having an edge you know not really being distinctive so it's really a case of discovering what is most important to you um, and then taking that and saying well how, what happens if we turn that up to 11 then the next question is saying well what's standing in the way of that what are the areas of compromise or friction what would it take to remove those things to be the best that we can be then we move on to products and services so reviewing what we actually deliver these are the services that we deliver by the hour or the products that that we ship is the product or service offering in alignment with the brand fairly straightforward does the client love doing it do they do it well and is it unique or at least distinctive in the marketplace and and how can we communicate its uniqueness or its distinctiveness can we say this is the only we are the only that delivers something for this particular group of people right what is the onlyness statement moving on then to to the proposition which joins what we do to the problem this is our promise to solve your problem does the proposition perfectly express why the product or service or combination of the two is the ideal solution to the problem is the proposition distinctive and remarkable is it really something worth talking about or can we make it something worth talking about if we crank it up to 11 you know, what would it take to make this something that people cannot wait to share with their colleagues or their friends and 4.3 does it make a big bold promise if it doesn't can it could it what could we promise yeah, it can make a huge difference in in the the art of persuasion for you to put yourself out there the the just picture it like this right if you make a, a half-hearted uh, proposition to the market this is what we do right a few people may respond to that and they may be satisfied but if you make a massive promise to the market right we are the only whatever that promises this we will do this come what may right and we back it up with a guarantee then what happens is the customer's expectations will be raised which is a good thing your expectation of your own uh, ability to deliver will then be heightened you will have to step up to the plate you will be encouraged and incentivized to over deliver because the difference between you, know, you you know the the old saying the the best possible ad advert for your business is a satisfied happy customer and the worst possible advert for your business is an unhappy customer so it really is worth going that extra step or that extra mile to delight every single customer and one of the best ways to do that is for you to stand tall to be the absolute best that you can be and to promise to do that even if you haven't been able to do it last week or last year stand up step up to the mark and say this is what I'm gonna do for you and people will respond to that they will love you for it and it will also bring the best out in you or likewise in your clients the problem proposition gap is the space between the problem and the proposition obviously this has been something that that we've been thinking about recently and I think it's worth uh, giving it some thought at this stage because we need to be preparing for in our in our future campaign for what we're gonna have to communicate in order to bridge that gap so 
This is saying that for people who are conscious of the problem, what's it going to take, right? What is the scale and the nature of the communication that it's going to take to make them aware of our proposition, right? And, and of its benefits to them. So just just worth giving some giving some thought at this point it's um it's not something that we have to do because it really does come into into campaign design but it's it's worth giving some giving some thought to we need to understand the problem obviously we're all looking for a bleeding neck problem we're looking for something that has pain or discomfort of some kind even if it's emotional or there's and and a missed opportunity can be painful as well it needs to be acute and is it focused? Is it time-based? Is it urgent? Is it pressing? Is it just something that's sufficiently poignant and motivating that's going to get people to say, yes, I need to do this and I need to do it now, right? The, the next, the other gap that we're conscious about is the problem market gap. And that is really uh, equivalent to, to the gap between step zero or step one and uh, step two, three, right? So, so no, it's, it's the gap between step zero and step one primarily. So this is saying, well, if people are not, there's a market out there of people who may have this problem, but they're not acutely aware of it. What do we need to do in order to make them aware of it? Now, the book that I'm writing at the moment, Web Design is Dead, is designed to address this. Because if you if you were to consider the... Uh, the market that I'm talking to, right? It, remember, this is in the context of ultimate web design as the solution. The market that I'm talking to is used to the way that things are. They're used to web design agencies paying high fee, uh, charging high fees, or they're used to the, the headaches of dealing with freelancers. Or if you're in the web design sector yourself, then... You know, things are the way that they are. Technology has moved along. What I'm trying to do is say, no, let's let's stop because something has changed quite dramatically recently. And the change is, yes, the technology has trickled down. Web publishing technology has trickled down so that you don't need high-level HTML and CSS skills or programming skills in order to publish online. But not only that, is that the quality of the platforms and the themes that are at our disposal has now reached such a level that you can publish professional quality web pages and websites online easily, quickly and cheaply. And what this means is that the, the artisan hand coding web designer role is, if not redundant now, is very soon becoming redundant, the water holes are drying up. So what I'm doing there is I'm defining the problem. I'm creating that bridge from this significant sized market who is, in my mind, looking down, down the, the barrel of a gun right now at a potential catastrophe, an extinction event for, for a lot of web designers, um, but which also affects the, the client sector as well. They are in the firing line of this problem, but they don't know of the problem. So the, what the book is doing is exactly this. The, the, the big issue in this circuit is that gap between the problem and the, the market and the problem. Right? There is a big market there, but they're quite a long way from the problem. It's not real for them. It's not present for them. So the purpose of the book and any supporting PR that will go along with it is to bridge that gap, that consciousness gap. Right? So the scale and nature of communication, this is what we always ask, right? is significant. Right? It takes quite a, a, a rot rotation in your thinking to move from, oh, I'm kind of doing okay, you know, this is the way that things are, to actually, do you know what? No, there could be a better way. And then, then finally, the last step is the market. Um, do we know who they are? Right? Do are they? Um, what unites them? How can we identify them? How can we single out this group? And particularly, do they congregate in any particular area? Okay, so that's the quick summary of the circuit review method. 
I would recommend that you uh, at least print print this off, but certainly also bookmark it so that you can come back to it at a later date. If, and if you've got any suggestions with questions that come to you with what works, please let me know, give me an email or write it on the forum. Thank you.